Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for the messiness and foolishness that is Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, Shimmer Down, Season 5, Episode 20. Baby, yes, it was the foolishness and the foolery of it all. It was the hot mess, the trash, the gutter, okay? We went all the way down to the pits of hell and came back up. Quaylin and Chevelle's mama said, oh, yo, y'all didn't see nothing yet. We didn't, you want to know how low can we go? We could go all the way to the flow. We ain't got no damn sense. We gonna act the whole ass fool. We gonna act like we got, we freaking kids, like we ain't got the sense God gave us roach like we ain't got no home training yes that's what we gonna do and we gonna do it on national tv for all of y'all to see Lindsay and freaking blame why are y'all still on my freaking screen i don't care i'm tired i don't want to see y'all i don't want to know what the hell y'all going through i don't want to know how y'all feel i don't want to know none of it okay please do not come back she over here tweeting out how good she doing i'm glad you doing good and i hope you continue to do it but can you please stay off of love after lockup okay we also had Brittany finally getting over here to see Nana. Went to see Abuela. They had a funky good time. And we finding out that Mama was over here telling lies, talking about Brittany was away at school when she was really locked up. And she just don't want nothing to do with her. And nothing about it is giving Christian. Nothing about it is giving saved. Nothing about it is giving godly at all. Is giving you know what, okay? Meanwhile, child. Janome, I forgot you was on the damn show. I forgot all about you and freaking Red Girl. And I wish I could forget about y'all for the rest of my lives because the fact that you got your son up here calling Red damn daddy, okay, he was really pissing me the hell off. You chasing around the freaking house looking like it's freaking hide and go seek for a PS5 because if he didn't take it, that means that there's a chance he may be coming back. Girl, bye. Moving on along from that child, who the heck else did we have up here in these streets? We also had um, Sean and Sarah. Sean and Sarah, baby, you lie, he lie, y'all lie, okay? Sean over here trying to get a second truck. The first truck he got is trash, okay? That got one damn foot in the freaking grave, about to not be working. And apparently, we acting like we've been giving Kelly money every single month just so Sarah could be mad at her and they won't be having no conversations because if they did, then they would probably find out the truth that all the lies you be telling the both of them. And she don't even know that you broke as a damn joke and you done ran all these freaking credit cards out, but we talking about getting some more damn money. Michael and Justine Michael you know you another one how low can I go how dare you talk about oh well I don't want my daughter to freaking move with me because then she would be away from Mason and she the one that stepped up when I couldn't when I was locked up and they wouldn't let me out and was holding it down changing the diapers feeding the kids and all of that that was not her damn job Michael she ain't the mother of your freaking kids she the sister and then we gonna have mama talking about oh let me come and help you okay and make things easier and bring the whole kids you know all the kids to spend the summer and we over here well where we gonna put them how that's gonna work uh i don't know and i don't give a damn those is his freaking kids how was y'all gonna make it work with them coming near to vegas or how was y'all gonna make it work with them coming here to visit y'all deals he never supposed to see his kids that he already have and i wouldn't trust mama because mama already said no matter what go down she gonna find a way to do a damn paternity test y'all Let's go ahead, child, okay, and get into this episode, break it on down, you know how we do. When I tell y'all that I, listen, we family, we family at this point, we friends at this point, we gather around in the den, we chit chat and talk about all of the things, honey, and when I tell you that I had to go ahead, relax, relay, release, call my nurse so my blood pressure don't go up, okay, go get me something to eat and make me a strong freaking drink before I sit down to do this review, honey, I cannot get right into the review right like I normally do after the episode, okay, could not, y'all, and I'm gonna try my best, I'm gonna try. Okay, can't make no promises to not go the hell off because it was some people up here that was really doing the most. But, you know, we going to start it out with 
the people that I feel like really didn't have much going on. We're going to knock them right on out the way. So we can start with number one, Brittany and Grandma. You know, we made it there safely to see Grandma. Grandma is too cute, okay? You know, um, I do appreciate the fact that Key Rock be trying to learn his little Spanish words. You know, he done got her some flowers. We coming in. We hugging it up. We just really happy to see Grandma. And Grandma's like, yo, I don't get okay yo mama i don't understand what the hell her problem is she like you know when you was locked up she was over here telling me you were way at college i'm asking to call you and she talking about you ain't got no phone and you ain't got no way for me to reach you and i'm like listen i was born last night i wasn't born last you know i was born at night i wasn't born last night the hell is going on like something don't sound right about this i don't believe this for not one you know damn minute and she's like, I don't understand how you basically can, you know, act this way towards your daughter and not want nothing to do with her. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have something to do with my damn grandchild. I said, I know that's right, grandma. Right. And, you know, we just basically was talking back and forth. Catching up as a family been six years since she been able to get down here. And I was kind of sad that they only got to spend a couple of hours and had to head right back, of course, because they have these passes, you know. So it really wasn't a lot of time spent, you know, with grandma. But the time that was spent was quality time. And it was good to see that other side in perspective that, you know, Brittany does have somebody that's on her side so to speak right it's not the whole family even though i know it's still touchy and hurts that her mother and father are not really seeming to go along with this but you did have the grandmother you did have an uncle that came and was talking and was also very supportive and a cousin that came in later on as well so you know it's good to see that side from her because we pretty much have seen key rock side you know several times at this point and after her, her grandmother, like, really got to hug it up. She was all crying and emotional. You know, of course, they brought her a gift. We sit down on the couch to, you know, talk. And, you know, Key Rock saying how beautiful she is and how happy that she got to do this and how much, you know, they actually look alike. And he like, oh, she's so little and small and cute or whatever, right? And so we go ahead and we sit down. And then Unc shows up and he's asking, like, you know, what's going on? When's the last time that you talked to the parents and stuff like that? And he even says like, well, damn, you know, how you call yourself a Christian? How you say that this is godly and that, you know, you love God and all of this or whatever and going to church or whatever. But then you treat your own child like that. You know, that is not godly to me. Um, I have to agree with him there. Right. But we know a lot of people in this world that are feeling that way. Right. And so, you know, I guess we was basically saying that she lied about her being a, a you know away at college because we was embarrassed about that or whatever right and that you know she was so upset about it and that she could understand that part but she like you ain't got a lie to me about nothing like that right and so we find out that you know the last time Brittany had seen her grandmother was actually like a couple of months before she committed her crime you know we see some pictures that's like when she was around 16 and you know she hated um Virginia and different things like that and so she had asked to go be with her grandmother and they was like of course you can and she came near to live for a minute so you know she was like you know when she finished her senior year whatever she had two jobs she was focused and she wasn't doing any drugs or anything like that and she was really really happy and really in a good space but then her mom wanted her to move back to Virginia and I'm assuming everything went downhill from that point right and she really didn't want to go back and so at the end of the day, grandma said her parents had the final say, not her, right? So, of course, she did go. And, you know, she was crying. Uh, Brittany was crying and all that. And the next thing you know, of course, when she went back, she ended up getting into trouble and getting incarcerated. And so, you know, they just was like really, really happy to get this time together. Grandma talking about, you know, come on, let's take a selfie and send it to your mother so she could be jealous. I said, oh, grandma got a little bit of pettiness in her. I know that's right. Like, hey, this is what you missing out on, right? You may not want to be around her, but I'm chilling with her. You know, we had another cousin that came and he was saying how it's been a minute. She was saying how big, you know, he done got on her and they ain't seen each other since he was like a little small kid or whatever. And, you know, we was hugging it out and just saying that we're proud of her and where she comes from and she was like unfortunately you know i got to get ready to get out of here because we only had a certain amount of time to be here we have these passes and so grandma was saying how listen key rock you could probably find some good jobs down here and make some really good money as far as refrigeration repair and things of that nature go you know maybe that's something that you may want to think about 
And I don't think any of us is shocked when Key Rock is like, yo, you know, she seems like a nice lady. They seem cool. Um, I appreciate her making that offer. But at the end of the day, I have my family and my issues. We already know Key Rock is not going to want to leave from where his family is at. But she basically was like, we will come back down here and we will visit soon again. Right. OK, cool. Now, moving on from there, who else can we talk about quick, fast and in a hurry? We can talk about Lindsay and Blaine, y'all. Like I said, I'm over it. I've been over it since I seen that they was going to be on this damn show. I do not get the point. We over here trying on dresses right after this argument. You know, he come in the room. You know, I'm sorry. I love you so much. I do want to marry you. And I really care about you. But I'll be feeling disrespected. I'll be feeling like I'm not heard. You know, I'll be feeling like I'm unappreciated. You know, I come in. I try to help you where I can. I try to pick up where you leave off. And at the end of the day, you still sit there and tell me that I'm not doing nothing. Nothing I do is good enough for you whoop de whoop de whoop you know she's saying i'll be tired i'll do as much as i can or whatever the case may be and you know she telling him that she love him too so she still goes to try this dress on she basically picks her daughter up and is like you ready we going to try the dresses and the daughter's kind of like we are like i wouldn't think that you still would be going after what happened earlier and she says to her daughter like yeah okay it was a little tiff or whatever the case may be but it wasn't nothing where i'm like oh we're gonna call this wedding off or anything like that yeah i'm still going you know we okay so we find out from um her daughter that is not just a little tip. That y'all have these little tips all the time. Y'all argue all the time like cats and dogs. Y'all get along for like five minutes. And then y'all be ready to chop each other damn heads off again. So we not feeling it. You know, we thought you would have called it off by now. So when we get inside of you know, this place to find the damn dress or whatever the case may be, everybody pretty much got sad faces. Lindsay is the only one that seems to be excited and is picking out these different dresses or whatever. And when she goes in the room and it's just Nana and her daughter outside by themselves, and Lindsay's like, well, damn, everybody look like they coming to a damn funeral, not like they getting ready for my freaking wedding. What's with the long faces? It seems like nobody is happy or whatever. You know, her daughter just starts to tell grandma, like, yeah it's been cool me and mom is getting along good but her and Dan Blaine be getting into it every freaking minute and they just literally had a real big blowout earlier today before we came here and I'm confused as to why we sitting here and then to top it off he basically be coming in the room to talk to me and tell me different negative things about her and complain about all the things that she doing to him. So she was like, really? She said, well, he shouldn't be doing that. And she said, it's one time when he came to her and was telling her stuff to him, venting to her, whatever, right? And it shouldn't be like it's awkward or whatever. It makes you uncomfortable and stuff like that for him to be coming to you to talk about her. And I get what they saying as far as that. I definitely don't think that he especially should be coming to her daughter to complain about her. But I'm just confused as to why everybody's acting shocked and acting as if this is not stuff that Blaine wasn't already saying and complaining about before. He done said it to me, child, all of us on the damn TV. He done said it in his confectionals. And we done literally seen him saying it to Lindsay herself. So while she was sitting here talking about she's just flabbergasted and she can't believe this is blowing her mind. And I'm so upset. And this is throwing me all the way off. Okay, when she finally come and sit down and talk to Nana and her daughter and they decide to tell her i'm also confused like i could probably understand her daughter because i'm sure that's very uncomfortable for her but nana and even whatever the other friend cousin whoever the hell she was saying yeah he's done it with us too why y'all didn't say nothing why would y'all wait till when she's in the middle of putting on a dress this thing just gives me fake phony and freaking stage y'all okay that's what it gives me we gotta come up with something because we ain't got nothing damn else that's what it give me so now we gonna pull out the dramatics and be like oh yeah he came to me too he came to me too and why don't you just look at the security camera and it's like well i don't check it every single day oh well maybe you should and if you go ahead and look you gonna find some real interesting stuff up there honey that's gonna definitely be something that you want to see and basically she goes and she pulls it up and of course we hear him going off on the damn camera or whatever the case where you know she's playing it from the phone and he's going on and on and on about i'm so tired of this i get treated like crap all the time i'm, I'm unappreciative literally the same things that he already was saying what was the difference what was the shocking moment because i didn't hear it i heard the same stuff that blaine been saying i don't know why the hell we pretending to be damn shocked then she tell grandma to go ahead and take, you know, 
her daughter to practice and she's stepping outside in their wedding dress, which is another fake ass damn thing because they would not have been letting you go outside like that. And we hear one of the ladies say like, is she leaving in the damn dress? Okay. And we going to go out barefoot with the dress and call Blaine. And of course he don't answer and the answering service come on and we like, oh my God, I can't believe what I just heard or whatever the case may be. And so, you know, I'm so disappointed in this and yet I'm here trying on this damn dress. I said to Blaine and Lindsay both. Okay. Do not get the hell up out my face, girl. Lindsay, I hope that you are doing good. Like I said, and I hope you are spending time with your daughter and focusing on her. And I hope you stay off my damn TV. Moving on from her child. Cause that shit just annoys me excuse my language y'all but it really does okay now we go from there to um who we gonna talk about next y'all we gonna go to sarah and sean sean decides that this is a nice time for me to teach sarah how to drive a truck why not? You know, let's go. I'm going to teach you how to drive this truck. And Sarah's in the freaking uh, mirror, you know, putting some cream on her scars and bandaging it up. And that scar looked crazy as hell, child. That scar looked like I took a damn knife and sliced Sarah's stomach myself and then proceeded to just take a thread and needle and say, girl, I'm going to sew you back up. I don't know where the hell you went to get this surgery done at, Sarah, but it definitely is giving me not a damn professional okay but nonetheless i digress moving right along we go ahead and we get in the truck and she look like she's doing the things you know right like she should or whatever the case may be and even she's complaining like oh i don't know how i let him talk me into this and what i'm doing here and i don't think this is a good time to be doing it but i'm gonna do it anyway and as you know we are driving or whatever all of a sudden the truck starts making a noise because of course the truck that sean has invested in is last it's on his damn last leg okay it's literally barely hanging the damn on he's talking about i don't know i never heard him make this noise before this is something brand new so she basically you know the phone starts ringing and she's like why is she calling you why is she calling you and of course he just ignoring it okay that's his answer is to not you know answer the damn phone and to not even answer her or acknowledge the fact that it's kelly on the phone that's calling right and she's talking about something you know she really irritates my nerves now i don't understand what the hell she calling about she said they originally had started on a good foot and seemed like they was getting along but later she had to cut her off and she really hates when she be calling sean or whatever because there's no reason for her to be calling him like that you know um uh, he, he doesn't need to be giving kelly any money it's only, it should only be about his kids and at this point he don't have no tiny kids the other kids are grown they're in the army and different things of that nature now i can get where she's coming from with that i absolutely agree with her but at the same time let's not act like freaking sean has been the daddy of the damn year and has always been taking care of his kids the way he's supposed to been taking care of them number two okay let's not act like sean is not a whole damn liar which he admits to us like well she been thinking i've been sending kelly money every month but i really haven't so she over here saying how they've been giving her a thousand dollars a month what more do she want when in all actuality that's not the truth and you can't tell me that he don't want it to be where sarah and um kelly don't get along purposely because if he did have them getting along and they was speaking on the regular that his spot would probably be blown up even faster and she would know even more when he's telling damn lies and be able to be caught out there so we like the fact that they don't speak and they don't get along and then kelly i mean sarah gonna talk about some i didn't sign up for this but in all actuality sweetie once you found out the truth because granted he was lying to you in the very beginning but once you found out that truth and you knew what he came with you did sign on with it and you accepted it and you took it so you can't sit here and want to complain about it after the fact and be like oh well you know there's no reason for her to be calling your phone i don't want to hear that yeah you could do for your kids but you can't do for her because i'm pretty sure if you and damn sean broke up today or tomorrow and then he has somebody else your ass would still be calling the phone too so let's not bull crap each other okay play that damn game with somebody else you know 
Now, he's also saying that he want to get this second truck. And it's like, what the hell are you going to get it with? Are you going to pull it out your ass? Where you think it's going to come from? We don't have the money from it. We up to our damn ears and freaking debt. And I'm about to take you off my credit cards because you've been playing damn games with that. Now, if anything, I could see her going off about that part more so than I can the Kelly part. So... You know, he basically was like, oh, yes, we can. We could take out a business loan. We could take out more credit. And she's like, no, that's the last thing we need to do. We got to handle the stuff that we already got on our plate. We cannot afford to be going and putting something extra. You know what I'm saying there? I agree with her 150% with that. If anything, fix the damn truck you got. How the hell you going to have one broke truck but talk about adding on a second one and having her drive that one child make it make freaking sense sean so and on top of that like i said we basically find out that he lying so she lies to him he lies to her we lie to each other and we both full of damn crap that's the bottom damn line y'all okay and i'm pretty sure by now she knows about the lies he told about damn kelly and that's a whole nother thing <laughs> when i tell you these freaking people are freaking crazy so you know she want to talk about how he talked her into this or whatever and that you know um she's just you know trying to go with the flow for this business because he said how much money they could be making i said yeah girl okay i guess so you was thinking about how much more damn surgeries you could get i guess so moving on from there y'all Janome and Red. I literally forgot Janome and Red was even up here, y'all. I said, damn, they dragged this out, huh? As much as they can, leave it to We TV. So at this point, he's already back in Missouri, and you know, I'm hearing her son talking about daddy. Where's daddy? When's daddy coming back? And she's like, I don't know. He in Missouri, whatever, whatever. And it just made my blood boil you. It really, really did. That boy is so beautiful. He's so adorable. So innocent. Do not know what the hell is going on. And damn you, Janome, for putting him in that predicament and having him get used to that freaking man, bringing that man around him, having him call him daddy, having him get attached to him. It's sad. It really breaks my freaking heart and it makes me mad and it makes me want to really punch you in your damn face, to be honest. Okay. On top of you you know, bringing him around him or whatever, exposing him. And then you walking around. He said he left the PS5 here. He said he left the PS5 here. I don't see the PS5. So if he didn't leave the PS5, then he may not be coming back. I said, bitch, what? What? Janobi, please stand up. Please stand up. Please get some therapy. Please to get some self-respect. And I mean that in the freaking utmost best way that I possibly can. Because it makes no damn sense. Learn to love your freaking self before you ever bring any man around your child. Whether they are locked up or not. Whether they read or not. I don't give a damn. Please, 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 child. Seek help. And learn to love your damn self. Because you don't love you. And you don't even love your son at this point to put him in that damn predicament with this freaking dude that you really don't freaking know. In the meantime, Red is visiting with his friends and we meet this one particular friend that apparently is the one that found Janome on Facebook in the first place. And put them two together and felt like, yo, this is going to be somebody that you can get some bread off of. This is going to be somebody that, you know, will be sending you money. So they saw the damn sucker in you and just wanted to use you. And that's exactly what he did. But according to him, they started out that way and then he really fun and live, which nobody wasn't expected. And he's saying how, you know, he actually was happy and all of that. But we are having issues because you not trusting him because he ain't give you no damn reason to trust him but you ain't trusting him and we already having fights and arguments and they're basically like yo it's still too early you wasn't even out there a month so if you're having fights and arguments already what the hell you going to once we get to four months five months six months a year he like damn wow y'all really giving me a aha moment i didn't even think of that whoa that's really deep I'm like, really? But it's red, so I guess. Then he goes from there to meeting up with his sister and them. And, you know, how happy he is to be back here and, 
you know, how good he's feeling and how good it's going or whatever the case may be. And he tells them that he, you know, did propose. And she, they like, you sure you ready for that? You know, marriage is a whole different ball game or whatever. Oh, I'm 30 years old. I think I am. I want to be serious and I want to make a commitment and I want this to be my family. And we say how much we miss her. And we look on, I'm assuming it's social media and see a picture of her. And we pull it up and we like, yo, look at my baby. Look how good she was looking. Look at her hair. Look at the makeup. Look at the eyebrows. Look at the titties. Oh, cover up them titties, girl. You know, and... Now we want to go home, honey, because we don't saw this pic. So we go outside and we call in the phone and we not getting no answer. Of course, on the flip side, the whole time when he was sitting talking with his sister, she's talking with her sisters and they asking, you know, where is Red? And he's like, she's like, oh, he left, you know. And um, I hadn't heard back from him since he'd been gone. And, you know, oh, do you think he out there for girls? And it's like, I don't know. He could be. I'm not really sure. Whatever the case may be. Possibility, you know, especially when somebody been lying and keeping secrets from you. You don't know what to believe. And we're asking, do you trust him? And it's like, I don't know. And it's like, girl, everything is I don't know. Like, what do you know? Because if you don't know, nobody else don't know. And then we got the sisters basically saying, you know, I doubt very much he being honest. I doubt very much he being, you know, loyal. I wouldn't be surprised if he out there talking whatever chicks or whatever. Child, you ain't surprised. We ain't surprised. You know me shouldn't be surprised. But it is what it is. This is what your sister wants to get her ass into, okay? And so... She don't answer the phone when he called, but we played a message and it's him talking about, I done had time to think, I done made up my mind and I think I'm coming back home. I said, I didn't know it was supposed to be about a time to think. From the get go, you said that this was just a vacation, that you was just going back to see your family for a minute and you was going to be back. So I'm confused as to what you had to think about. Or maybe Janome should be confused at the game, what you had to think about because you just basically told on yourself with that. And so... You know, she over here, oh, wow, you know. So then when he get home, it's like, are you okay? You know, I love you. I miss you. We gonna hug up and all of that. We asking where, you know, her son is at and he's at school. So it's like, okay, we can have time to talk. And she have this little journal that she done wrote things in or whatever. And she sit down and uh, is naming some of the things, which is nothing that, you know, you wouldn't expect somebody to ask for in a relationship. You know, I want to be able to trust you. I want to have honesty. I want us to be on the same page and be open about what we trying to get to and all of that. And so he's like, OK, since you ask her for honesty, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to be as honest with you as I could possibly be. You know, um, during the time when me and you had the argument back at the hotel and I left. I went and had sex with my bestie, okay? He did tell the truth, and I was surprised that he told the truth. And, of course, we know what Janome going to do. Janome going to break down crying like she always do, okay? Wasn't nobody shocked by that. And so, more than likely, she going to probably go off and <laughs> be telling him to get the hell out or whatever after she find that out. She's like, oh, that's really the truth? That's really what happened? Uh, Yeah, that is, sis, Okay. So now, Michael and Justine, Michael, 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 mm-mm-mm, bitch, you got the right freaking one. Michael Raggedy Ass and Justine, we out for lunch. Notice how they wasn't dressed alike today, baby. We ain't feeling each other. We ain't dressed alike. We we looking the way we feeling like we like shit right now. OK, but we made it out the house to have this damn lunch. And as we getting ready to order this food, my mama, Michael mama calls on the phone. You know, oh, we out, we having this lunch. You know, can you step outside for a minute so I can talk to you? Okay, you know, excuse me for a minute, y'all. So he go outside. What's going on, mama? You know, how did everything go? He says, not too good. I'm kind of in the doghouse now, so to speak. You know, um, the move is not going to happen. We're not going right now. We'll be here for a minute. So she says, well, I know what would help. How about me and the kids come there to stay for the summer? 
Michael said, huh? I said, huh? How the hell is that going to help? What the hell is that? You know, I can help with the baby and all of that stuff. And you can have extra time to spend with the kids. So he says, I don't know, Ma. I don't want to tell you yes or no right now. I got to speak to Justine and see how she feels about it. So when she come out, of course, she's like, what's going on? What was that about? And he puts her up to date with it. And she's like, I, I don't know. Like, where are we going to put the kids, all of the kids? And, you know, they're all going to be there. And, you know, then she says in the confession room, I don't know. You know, even though me and his mom are supposed to be better, I don't think we really better. And I don't trust her. And I don't believe anything that she be saying. Now, I'm not necessarily mad with her with feeling that way pertaining to mama. Because mama did say, no matter which way it go. I will find a way to do this daggone paternity test. So I wouldn't trust her around my child, to be honest. She violated that trust, in my opinion. But when it comes to the kids and you being like, well, where am I supposed to put them at right now? Where are we supposed to put them at? Where are we supposed to do with them? What was you supposed to do with them any other time, Justine? I, I don't understand y'all people. And I'm saying this shit till I'm freaking turn red already okay like a broken damn record but how do you get with a man or women that have kids and then don't expect those kids to be involved into their lives you act like there's a cutoff or you act like because you now have a child by them too or you're pregnant by them too that exempts the kids that came before them these is going to be his kids for the rest of his life and you should not be okay with them being moved away from him to begin with let alone if they want to come and spend time with him saying oh but how are we supposed to work that out i don't know bitch figure it the hell out because you know that there is three other kids that come along with him but bottom line she turns around and she says okay yeah i do need the help uh, and you are driving me crazy or whatever, but she was like, you know, the concern is where we're going to put everybody. And they say, well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to figure it out and we will work it out. Right. Okay, cool. So we get there, mama and the kids, we all hugging it up. We all saying we're going to have a good time. Mama's checking in with her, asking her how it's going, how she feeling. She like, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm definitely disappointed because I thought we was going to be gone. I'm ready to have this damn baby and I'm ready to move because she was saying like, I'm ready. And mama was like, which one to have the baby or to move? And we were able to get in touch with the doctor and she was able to pencil us back in so that we could have a safe birth here. So we are happy with that. Right. And so mama's like, listen, we're in a good place right now, aren't we? And Justin, yeah, being all damn phony, we are, right? So we should be good with that. And she's like, you know, I'm just here to help you. And she's like, I know you are. appreciate you. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. So Michael's daughter comes over to him. And she says, you know, I've been thinking about it or whatever. And I think that I want to go with y'all to Vegas when y'all go too. How do you feel about that? And he was like, for good? To live? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if that's realistic. I don't know if that's possible. It's always been Mason and Michael. And, and you know, she stepped in and she was taking care of them and feeding them and changing their diapers and, and, and you know, and, and getting the bottles ready. She stepped up when I couldn't. I said, I know you freaking lying. I know, Michael, you are freaking lying. Ain't no damn way in God's green earth that you sitting here with a straight damn face after just speaking last week. Y'all was asking her, well, what do you want to do? Would you be going with them or you would stay in here? And she was saying how she was confused and didn't know because she thinking about her mother. She thinking about her siblings and whether she would want to leave them or not. Only for you to turn around and look her into her damn face and tell her that it may be a problem. Not because I don't want you there, but because you wouldn't be here to no longer take care of them and they would be by themselves. Bitch, that's your damn job. That's your job. That's your problem. That's your fault. How dare you try to freaking guilt trip her 
In the meantime, you leaving all of them, including her. What freaking part you don't understand, Michael? Like, what is happening here? It was not her job to step up since they was birthed. It was not her job to make them her damn priority. That sound like more than a damn big sister to me. That sound like a freaking mama. That sound like they ain't have their mama or their damn daddy the way you freaking talking. And how do I tell little Michael he would feel like I'm just abandoning him? Don't he feel that way any freaking way right now? Oh, I miss the whole thing, the burping, the bonding, the feeding, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the kid. And, you know, I didn't get to be a father and I feel guilty about that. Do you really? Do you really feel guilty? Because if you felt that damn guilty, then bitch, you wouldn't be moving to freaking Vegas to begin with. And then he start asking her about how her mom feel about it, which you really should have freaking started with that. And should have been had the conversation with her mama. That tells me you probably still haven't talked to the damn mothers. Knowing your freaking raggedy ass behind. Said I wasn't going to get upset y'all. And then going to have the nerve and the audacity. Because baby like I said we ain't going to just go low. We going to go low, 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 low. Well, let me talk to Justine, too, because I don't know how she's going to feel about this. And right now, I'm already in the doghouse. I'm already shook. I don't know how she's going to be feeling for a minute to damn minute. So, I got to tiptoe around and make sure, you know what I'm saying, that I don't mess up no more than I already done did. And, you know, she may be in her feelings and feel a certain way about this as well or whatever the case may be. So, I think, like, all these conversations is happening a little too fast. We may need to relax, relieve, release, regroup, and come back to it later i said nah it ain't conversations happening too fast it's conversations that your ass been avoiding and hiding from and ducking and waiting to the last damn minute to have and that's the freaking problem from the get-go jackass She was saying at the end, she think that her mom would be for it or whatever. And when he, you know, like she asked him about Justine. Well, Justine loves you guys, but I don't know if she loves, you know, you guys to be having all the y'all underneath one roof. Uh, that's a lot for her. And, uh, you know, I got to say, hey, Melody wants to move in and that would be putting even more on her. When she freaking married you, bitch, she chose you and your damn kids. She would have to make freaking room for them under her damn roof. What we talking about? Let me move from these people, y'all. Let me move from these people. He said he was going to break the news to Justine. Whatever. Whatever. I used to like Michael. And the more time that goes on, I, I, I'm, I'm not feeling his ass no more. At all. Last but not least, <coughs> Chevelle and Quaylen. I feel bad for Chevelle. I honestly do. Don't get me wrong. Chevelle mama and Quaylen mother been giving each other a run from the money from the very beginning. They both got mouths on them. They both speak their minds. They both obviously agree that these two should not be getting married. And they are probably 110% right about that. And like I say time and time again, sometimes people got to learn the hard way. They got to learn for themselves. We could tell them so we blew in the face. It is what it is. But the fact that you don't give care enough about your damn daughter. That you sit there and you disrespect her. Forget everybody else. Forget Quaylen mama. Forget Quaylen sister. You disrespect her. You disrespect your grandchild. And you disrespect yourself. On national damn TV. And then have the nerve to laugh about it afterwards. And whatever little cousins and friends that's there. Oh I'm so glad y'all made it. He he he. And you think the shit is funny. That you hurting your damn daughter. Yeah he may hurt your daughter later too. Right? Men come and go. But you her damn mama. 
And that was so trash and so freaking disgusting to me. It wasn't a damn thing funny about it. That's some low down, dirty, doggy shit right there. You did, lady. For real. Even Quail and Mama. We, child. So we picked up where we had left off with them. We arguing back and forth at this point. Chevelle said, listen, I got to go outside. I can't take it. I can't be around this. Let me step outside for a minute. And she said the part that hurts her the worst is that it was done in front of her damn daughter. Okay. And it shouldn't have been. She tried to bring her mother outside for a minute and say, listen, shimmer down. I need you to shimmer down. And mama looked her dead in her face and said, I won't shimmer down. Not for you. Not for Quaylen. Not for anybody. And once she would have said not for you, that's all the hell I need to hear. Mama, you can go. Mama, you could go. Mama, you could go. But Chevelle still ain't say that. She told her, you know, you hurting me. I'm just asking, can you please do this for me? This is supposed to be my day. This is supposed to be about me. This is supposed to be my bridal shower. I get that you don't like Quaylen. I get that you don't approve this. You know, you made yourself perfectly clear, but you ain't got to sit here and show out like this in front of every damn body and act a fool. And she basically told her, this is what it's going to be. I'm not stopping it, period. Either take me, tell me to get the hell out, tell me you don't want me to be here, but I'm going to continue to be me and I'm going to continue what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to bust up your whole shit. I don't give a damn if it make you mad. I don't give a damn if it's going to make you cry. I don't give a damn if you upset. I don't give a damn about you. That's basically what her mother said when she was saying that. And then we went back in and we continued to start a whole nother freaking argument where Chevelle sat down with his mother and them, his mother was saying, I feel horrible. I feel horrible. I feel terrible. I'm so sorry. You know, um, I know that I played a part in this as well. And I apologize for the part that I played into it. I'm not happy that it's going this way. I know she don't like my son. I know she don't care for the situation. But at the end of the day, for me, it's a sensitive situation. And for me, it's more important that I see him happy and see y'all happy. Even if I don't agree with this or even if I don't think that y'all ready for it right now, I would much rather be there and give y'all the support as y'all two being the ones that made the choice to do this. Period. End of discussion. And as she's sitting there saying this, we got Chevelle's mom coming from the background again. Oh, well, I don't like his freaking ass and F him and you either bitch. And nobody's talking to you, lady. Nobody's talking to you, lady. And then she going, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Well, who the hell are you? And now we're going to have an argument back and forth between her and his sister. Because now his sister's saying, listen, I'm a grown ass woman. Yeah, I may be, you know, a child that's younger than you, but I'm still grown. And I'm still going to stand up for my brother and I'm still going to stand up for my mama. And then she's telling the damn lady, I'll beat you behind like your damn mama should have. Okay, and never did. And I'm saying, what the hell is this ghetto ass shit that I'm watching? They have to break them apart. And did you see the look on freaking Chevelle's daughter's face? Did you see Chevelle standing up saying, stop it, ma, stop it, ma, stop it, ma, stop it, ma, stop it, ma. And they literally having to pull these grown ass freaking people apart. And at this point, Quaylen come, he asked him what's going on. Chevelle is on the verge of tears. She going outside. I can't take this. I can't take this. I can't take this. I don't know what else to do. He's saying, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You know, I just wanted us to have a good time. This is supposed to be our, um, you know, bridal shower. And this has turned into my worst freaking nightmare. And the part that hurts me the worst again is that my daughter had to be here and see this. Quaylen says, we better off doing this shit on Zoom. I said, baby, you better do it on Zoom. Okay, you better do it on damn uh, StreamYard. You better do it on... I forgot the other damn app, uh, app that we used to be on during COVID when we couldn't be around. Whatever virtual app you can find. I'm sure there's several. 
or go to the courthouse, baby, and videotape it and send it to who the hell you want to send it to. Or have your wedding and don't invite anybody at all. Or all of y'all go y'all separate ways. But what you should not do is ever bring these people around each other ever, ever, ever again. Ever, 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 ever again. This was absolutely freaking ridiculous. And then every minute, bitch, I got you, bitch, I got you, bitch, I got you, bitch. And we about to go at it again and they got to drag them the hell apart. Are you freaking kidding me? And then Quaylen mother comes outside and talks to both of them and says, I apologize for my part. It takes two people to have an argument. She wasn't doing it by herself. I played a part in it. I came out my face too. I was acting a damn fool too. And for that, I apologize. I'm sad that I hurt you. I care about you and I care about my son. And I want y'all to be able to be happy. And if it means me not coming to the wedding in order for y'all to be able to enjoy y'all day, that's what I will do. I don't care for neither one of them as far as the mamas. And I think, again, that they probably right on how they feel about Quaylen and Chevelle and them getting married. But at least she had the damn decency to say, you know what? This ain't about me and my feelings. And more importantly, we got other friends and family that's here. This is supposed to be a damn party. It's not supposed to be the freaking box and match of Chevelle and Quaylen's mom. Okay. And we gonna be on damn TV. Let me act like I got some damn sense. Sit my ass down for a minute. And talk like the freaking grown ass woman that I'm supposed to be. And for that I commend her. Because unfortunately for Chevelle and Chevelle's mama. That wasn't happening. And I also peep how Chevelle said to her. You know with you and your marriages. I never said anything. How many marriages was that and how and what was going on in there? Because that felt like a very loaded comment. But yet you coming down here to come down on me about the person I chose to be with. And then they both pull her again and try to talk to her and was like, you know, Ma, you hurt me. And the part that I'm really the most hurt about is the fact that, you know, my daughter was there when all of this was happening and her mother looking like, and, and, and then she told her, you know, I get it that you don't like Quaylen, but this the man I love. We getting married regardless. And she said, oh. Y'all act like it was just me. Y'all act like I'm the one that started the door. Y'all act like I'm the one that was doing everything. And Quaylen said, well, I wasn't here. He said, but that's what I've been hearing. Everybody been saying it was you. She said, well, your family is the one that's telling you it was it was me. No, I'm pretty sure it's not just his family because everybody been there. And you got damn Chev <laughs> You got Chevelle and your granddaughter literally on the damn Virgin Tears lady. So I'm sure it's not just his family. I'm sure there's some of them that's saying it, but I doubt very much they're the only ones. And then he says, well, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know, you that's what you did. That's what I heard. So she said, and if I did, and what? What you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? And all this head nodding shit. Like she a freaking bobblehead. And he said, and I'm going to still get married. And I'm going to still get married. And I'm going to still get married. Because the point is that if you doing all of this for us to call off the wedding, the wedding ain't about to get called off, girl. We still going to get married. You still going to be mad. And you still going to be looked at like a freaking jackass to act the whole damn fool at her daughter's bridal shower. That's what. And they just both ended up getting up and walking away. Chevelle said, Mama, what are you doing? 
why are you doing this? And she was like, oh, I get it. You all happy with your in-laws now and you want to take their side. It's cool. And then going to say, I've been taking care of you all your life. I looked out for you all your life. I was there for you all your life. She said, it's not about that. It's not about that. This was supposed to be my day. It's not supposed to be about that. Yeah, you may have taken care of me for all my life. And thank you very much for doing that. I didn't ask to be brought into this world. You was my mother. So that's what I would think that you would do. But today is a day that I'm trying to freaking sit here and have my damn bridal shower. And the fact that she couldn't see that and that she took her raggedy ass over there to some cousins talking about some. Hey, cousins, I'm so glad y'all made it. How y'all doing? y'all got y'all drinks and then we heard chef also say something about you know she, all she been doing is drinking and since she got all them drinking drinks in her so i don't know if she got an alcohol problem i don't know what the hell else is going on with her but baby chevelle said she was up out of here she said she wasn't filming she said cut the damn cameras we going home and i don't blame her because in some situations you got to protect your peace i don't give a damn it could be mother brother sister cousin father okay grandfather grandmother sometimes you got to protect your damn peace and i lord listen i would have maybe forgot she was my mama for a minute that was some trash ass shit but that's what i got y'all that was the episode tell me how y'all felt about it child Put it in the comments, y'all. Let's talk about it down there. Anything that I left out, put it in the comments. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Till next time, y'all. See you, <laughs>